Okay, so this is a lecture for chapter six, part two of two. We're going to start with uh, enthalpy. Uh, the enthalpy H with letter H as a simple of a seed team is the sum of the internal energy of the seed team and the product of pressure and volume. So therefore, uh, we can write H equals E is the internal energy and plus the product of pressure times the volume. And this is the equation for the definition of enthalpy H. Uh, so therefore we know H is a state function because the internal energy is a state function, pressure and volume also state function. The change of enthalpy is a useful quantity in chemical reactions. Uh, so precisely, without any approximation, we can write delta H equals delta E plus delta P times V. We also know delta E is the, uh, the internal energy change that can be written as Q plus W. And delta PV can be written as the final pressure times the final volume minus uh, initial pressure times initial volume. So Pf is the final pressure, Vf is the final volume, Pi is the initial pressure, Vi is the initial volume. Now at constant pressure, Pf, which means the final pressure, equals Pi, which standing for initial pressure, equals P, because constant pressure. Uh, also, we'll use QP to represent in Q at a constant pressure process. Okay, so from this equation, if the pressure is constant, so PF, PI can be replaced by P, and we factorize the P and P out from this first and second terms, and we get P times VF minus VI, so we know what is we f minus we i. This is a delta v. So therefore, at a constant pressure, this uh, delta p v, which is the one I want to use in the calculation for delta h, become p times delta v. By definition, p times delta v equals negative w. So therefore, this second term in this delta h which is delta PV, so delta PV can be written as negative W, but the condition is constant pressure. We also know delta E equals uh, QP plus W. So now with this equation, with this equation, we put it together here, and we'll see what's really delta H uh, standing for at a special process, at a constant pressure process. Okay, so we will replace this delta E by this equation, and then this P times delta V by this negative W, and this is okay if the process is a constant pressure, is at constant pressure. So therefore at a constant pressure, delta H become QP plus W, so this first two is come from delta E. Uh, the negative W come from P times delta V. So ne positive W, negative W cancel out, we get QP, which is very useful because it tells us the enthalpy chain delta H of a reaction is the heat involved in chemical reaction at constant pressure. So delta H reaction equals Q reaction at constant pressure. Usually delta H and delta E are similar in value. The difference is the largest for reaction that produce or use large quantities of gas. Use the sign of delta H, we can define two common chemical reaction uh, two types of chemical reactions. One is endothermic, the other one is exothermic. 
Okay, so endothermic, which means it absorbs the heat, and exothermic, which means it releases the heat. Uh, when delta H is negative, heat is being reduced by the system, like in this one. So, the, so the, those kind of process is exothermic. Or we can say reactions that release heat are called exothermic reactions. When delta H is positive, heat is being absorbed by the system. And uh, we considering a chemical reaction is, is a system, or reactions are system. So reactions that absorb the heat are called endothermic reactions. Chemical heating, uh, chemical heat packs contain iron fittings that are oxidized in an exothermic reaction. Your hand gets uh, warm because the reduced heat of the reaction is absorbed by your hand. Chemical cool packs contain, for, for example, ammonium nitrate. Ammonium nitrate is a soluble salt. That it dissolves in water in an uh, endothermic process. So your hand are getting cold because they are giving away your heat to this reaction. Example 6.6 Exothermic and endothermic processes identify each process as endothermic or exothermic and indicating the sign of delta H. The first process you want to consider is the sweat evaporating from your skin. So sweat evaporating from your from skin cools the skin and is therefore endothermic for sweat with a positive delta H. The skin must supply heat to the perspiration in order for it to, to continue to evaporate. The second process we are going to consider is the water freezing in a freezer. So water freezing in a freezer releases the heat and is therefore exothermic for water with a negative delta H. The refrigeration system in the freezer must remove this heat for the water to continue to freeze. Process C is the wood burning in a fire. So wood burning in a fire releases the heat and, and is therefore exothermic for wood with a negative delta H. CRA 6.10, which of the following has a negative value of delta H? A, the combustion of gasoline, yes. B, the melting of snow, no. So that would be endo, endo, process for the melting of the snow. The evaporation of uh, ethanol is also endo. So B and C both are, are endo. If endo, that means delta H is positive. Uh, D, the sublimation of CO2 at room temperature. Sublimation means uh, the substance change from solid directly to gas without goes through the liquid. So this is also uh, endo, which means delta H is positive. So only A, which, which is exo, and delta H is negative. So therefore, our answer uh, for this uh, CRA 10, 6.10 is uh, A. Okay, so we are going to study Anthropies of reaction. The anthropy change in a chemical reaction is an extensive property. It means depend on how much we have or depend on the amount of the chemical reactions. The more reactants you use, the larger the anthropy change. By convention, we calculate the anthropy change for the number of moles of reactants in the reaction as written. For example, if we have a chemical reaction written as C3H8 gas, which is a propane plus 5O2 gas, 
which is oxygen gas, produces three CO2 gas, carbon dioxide gas, then plus four H2 gas water vapor, and then written uh, delta H equals negative 2044 kilojoule. So this delta H negative 2044 kilojoule is associated with the way this chemical reaction is written. Uh, so therefore, we can get some of those uh, equivalents. Uh, so for this uh, uh, given delta H, we can write uh, the mass of those substances in this equation. Uh, how much more we have depends on the coefficient. So the coefficient for C3H8 gas is one. So therefore, we can write this equivalency. We say one more C3H8 equals negative 20, uh, 244 kilojoule. And we learn in the first few chapters, if we have a equivalent or equation, we can write this as two fractions. So we can write either the right side of this equation on the top, and then the left side of the, the of this equation at the, the bottom. Or we can flip it. So therefore, from this equation or equivalence, we have these two fractions. And this negative 244 kilojoules is associated with any of the substances written in this uh, equation. So we can also uh, connect this negative 244 kilojoules with O2 gas. And then how much O2 gas is related to this negative 244 kilojoule depend on this coefficient. So therefore, we can write in terms of O2, uh, so we'll write five moles of O2 equivalent as negative 244 kilojoule. Then similarly as this equation can be converted into two fractions, so this equation can also be uh, rewrite or convert it into two fractions. You can take either this negative 244 kilojoule on the top, or you can take the five bar on the top to so get these two conversion fractions, which is very useful if we have some of those uh, uh, models of this, uh, for example, this C3H8, we can convert into how much uh, kilojoules. So similarly, you can write more, two more equations and get four more fractions. Uh, so one more equation you can write, uh, so we have three more CO2 uh, or equals negative 244 kilojoule. Or you write four more of H2O and also negative 244 kilojoules. So in example 6.7, uh, storage asymmetry involving delta H. Uh, and LP, LP standing for liquid propane, so LP gas tank in a home barbecue contains 13.2 kilograms of propane, so propane C3H8. Uh, calculate the heat in kilojoule associated with the complete combustion of all the propane in this tank. Uh, give you this equation, the combustion reaction equation for propane, uh, C3H8 gas plus 5O2 gas produces 3CO2 gas plus 4H2 gas, and uh, given delta H reaction equals negative 2044 kilojoule. As we saw from the last slide, this negative 2044 kilojoule is related to any of these four substances. In terms of their coefficient, you can use their coefficient as mass and make some of those equations. Okay, so by given 13.2 kilogram C3H8 and delta H reaction equals negative 244 kilojoule, find the Q, find the heat. So our plan was starting from Kg C3H8 and convert. Kg to G, so kilogram to gram, we'll use one kilogram equals 1,000 gram. Then we'll use molar mass of C3H8, convert gram to moles. Then we'll use 
the those those kind of conversion fraction from last slide. Uh, so here we have uh, C3H8. We find the coefficient for C3H8 is one. So one, then we write this number. Uh, so that's the conversion fraction from this uh, delta H. So now in planting our conservative plan, we start with the 13.2 kilograms of C3H8. And then we are going to multiply by this first fraction to convert from kilogram to gram. And we check the condition later. And then we multiply by this second fraction, which will convert gram to moles. Then the last one will convert from mole to kilojoules of heat. Now we're checking the condition. So kg cancel with kg and gram. G cancel with gram G, and then more cancel with moles, we get uh, kilojoules. So we get negative 6.12 times 10 to the positive 5 kilojoules of heat from the complete combustion of 13.2 kilogram of protein. Uh, so this is CRA 6.11 is uh, regarding the statement, so which of the following statement are about entropy is true? First, choice A, the value of delta H for a chemical reaction is the amount of heat absorbed or evolved in the chemical reaction on the condition of constant pressure. So that is true. B, an endothermal reaction has a positive delta H and absorbs heat from the surrounding. An endothermal reaction feels cold to, to the touch. That's also true. Statement C is an exothermal reaction has a negative delta H and gives off heat to the surrounding. An exothermal reaction feels warm to the touch. So that's also true. So therefore, uh, state statement A, B, and C are all true statements. So therefore, our answer is E. OK, so CRA 6.12, ammonia reacts with oxygen, oxygen gas according to the following equation. So for ammonia, ammonia is an H3 gas, and then plus 5O2 gas produce 4NO gas plus 6H2 gas. And uh, delta H for this reaction written E cross negative 906 kilojoule. Uh, calculate the heat in kilojoule associated with the complete reaction of 115 gram of uh, NH3. So to do that, we follow very similar process as in the example. Um, so we will need the molar mass of uh, ammonia NH3 because right now give us is 115 grams. So we can see molar mass of uh, ammonia NH3 equals 14.01 plus three times 1.01 equals 17.04 gram per mole. Uh, so next, we will use this model mass and uh, start with 115 gram and H3, multiply by a conversion fraction come from this model mass. So we need to divide the gram out. And uh, we will write the conversion fraction like that. So the gram will come out. And then next, we are going to use the conversion fraction from this delta H. So we can write a equivalency from this uh, equation as written. We can write the four more of uh, NH3 equals negative 906. Kilojoules, so therefore we will write four more NH3 and negative 
906. Pj now uh, we will cross out the units so gram cancel out mol cancel out then we have Kj. So we get negative one point five three times ten to the three Kj. Therefore, the answer is E. Uh, so next, CRA 6.13, what mass of butane in grams is necessary to produce uh, 2.5 times 10 to the power to 3 kg of heat? What mass of CO2 is produced if uh, we have this uh, uh, chemical reaction equation? So this uh, CO4H10 uh, uh, is butane. React with O2 gas produce uh, CO2 and water, so the delta H reaction equals negative 26.58 kilojoules. So what do we do? Uh, we were uh, using this uh, equation as written, write up like uh, two uh, equations. One equation we can write is uh, y, uh, y more of C4H10, which is butane equals uh, negative uh, 2658 uh, kilojoules. The other equation will be, if we are asking for the CO2, so we can write CO2. So we can write four more of CO2 equals negative 2658 kgs. Okay, so you want to produce this amount of heat, which means the reaction releases heat. So therefore, this heat will be negative. So we'll start with right uh, negative 2.5 times 10 to the positive 3 kJ. And, uh, and then we will use one fraction to convert this kJ into how much uh, moles of butane. Uh, so we will use the first equation uh, so we have negative 2658 uh, kJ, and that will give us y more of uh, C4H10. And next, you will use more mass of C4H10. So y more C4H10 is how much of grams? You can just calculate that. Uh, so that is 58.1. For gram. Okay, so let's check the cancellation now, and also I will make a note. So this fraction is from molar mass of uh, uh, butane. All right. Uh, so now we know uh, where are those. Uh, Fraction come from where those numbers come from, and uh, we can just uh, check the unit cancellation. So kg kg comes out more more comes out. We get a gram of this uh, C four H ten, and uh, we multiply and uh, we divide and multiply. So what do we get for this C four H ten? It will be 55 gram of C4H10. We'll circle that. And then we'll continue with the second part. Uh, we'll calculate what mass of CO2 is produced. Very similar. We'll start with, uh, maybe use a different thing. We'll start with uh, negative 2.5 times 10 to the uh, positive three kilojoules. So if you want to produce this amount of kilojoules, you need 55 gram of C4810, and that's also produce CO2. So we can ask you how much CO2, how much gram of CO2 can it be produced? So we will use the same first fraction to convert the kilojoule into moles of CO2. So moles of CO2 uh, related to this negative 2658 kilojoules by this equation, 
therefore we will have four moles of CO2. Now after that, we will use molar mass of CO2 to get the gram of CO2. So molar mass of CO2 is 44.0 gram per mole. Now I will also make a note. So where this fraction comes from? So this is from so this is from molar mass of CO2. We simply call the mm of CO2. Right, uh, now let's check the concentration of the units. So Kj, Kj comes out more and more comes out to get the gram. And uh, so we multiply the white, so we get 166 uh, gram of uh, CO2. So therefore, our answer will be D. Answer is D. Okay, now we are going to study how to measure the delta H. So again, we use those uh, colorometer. If we use a colorometer at constant pressure, then what we measure is actually the delta H. Reactions done in aqueous solution are easily at constant pressure. For example, we can see in this setting, uh, so constant pressure because it is open to the atoms of fair. So even though you have a lead, and obviously your lead is not that much sealed therefore the air can go um, in and out of this cup which will be the main frame of our colorometer the colorometer is often uh, nested film cups containing the solution in the uh, in the second one uh, we assuming the insulation of the cup is perfect the only solution is the surrounding. So therefore we have Q reaction equals negative Q solution. Equals negative, come from this negative, then Q, we use our uh, Y equation for heat is uh, mass times specific heat times temperature change. So we give the subscript and indicating what the mass is for what, uh, the specific heat is for what, and the temperature change will be also for this solution. Uh, so therefore, we can write uh, our delta H reaction. So delta H reaction will equal the Q reaction divide. So this is divide by more uh, by number of moles of those uh, sub Example 6.8, measuring delta H reaction in a coffee cup colorometer. Magnesium metal react with hydrochloric acid according to the following balance equation. So MgS is magnesium metal and hydrochloric acid is HCl AQ. Uh, so produce so magnesium metal reacting with hydrochloric acid produce magnesium chloride and then hydrogen gas. So the equation balance you see the coefficient one for Mg two for HCl one for MgCl two one for H two. In an experiment to determine the entropy change for this reaction, we combined. Uh, we combine 0 0.158 gram of magnesium metal with enough HCl to make a 100.0 milliliter solution in a coffee cup colorometer. The HCl is sufficiently concentrated so that the magnesium or the Mg completely regulates. The temperature of the solution rises from uh, 25.6 degrees Celsius 
to 32.8 degrees Celsius as a result of the vaccine. Find the delta H vaccine for the vaccine as written. Use 1.00 gram per milliliter as density of the solution. And CS uh, solution equals 4.18 joule per gram per Celsius at the specific heat of the solution. So we are given 0 0.158 gram magnesium and 0 0.0 milliliter of solution. Ti 25.6 gram, Tf 32.8 gram, and that's the that's called to density equals 1.0 gram per milliliter, and a specific heat solution equals 4.1 Q per gram per Celsius. And then we want to find delta H reaction in terms of a kilojoule per mole of magnesium. So we were first using the specific heat solution and uh, mass of solution, then delta T for the solution changed to get the Q solution. Then we use uh, uh, that uh, uh, conversion, so Q reaction equals negative Q solution and uh, to calculate Q reaction. And then we'll use this equation to calculate delta H. So delta H equals Q sub Rxn. Rxn is a solution divided by more of mg. Okay, so we start with uh, using the, uh, the mass of solution uh, uh, to find to calculate the mass of solution, so we have uh, 100.0 milliliter of solution. So that's the volume of a solution. Then multiplied by the density of a solution, we get uh, 1.00 times 10 to the positive 2 gram. And then we calculate the temperature change for the solution. So temperature change equals Tf minus Ti equals 32.8 degrees Celsius minus 25.6 degrees Celsius equals 70 or 7.2 degrees Celsius. Then we can use this equation to calculate Q solution. So Q solution equals, so Q solution means heat of uh, the solution uh, equals mass of the solution times specific heat of the solution times delta T of the solution. Uh, so we just find out delta T seven e equals 7.2 degrees Celsius. So here and C of S, we can use 4.18. Uh, and here, then mass we find is 100, uh, 100 grams, so we can put it here. So therefore, we cancel out those units and we get joules. And uh, you probably want to convert into kilojoules uh, sometimes later. But now we can use this conversion between Q reaction and Q solution. So Q reaction equals negative Q solution. And Q solution is positive, so therefore Q reaction becomes negative. Now we can uh, calculate the delta H reaction. Uh, so delta H reaction or equals Q reaction divided by more of magnesium. And uh, we probably will uh, do the conversion from the gram of magnesium and right here in the calculation. So this is the given gram of Mg and this 24.31 is the molar mass of Mg. So by using this conversion right here, we will get the moles of Mg. Then we take the Q reaction, reaction which is negative 3.0 times 10 to the positive 3 J, a joules divided by more, and we will get, uh, so for negative 4.6 times 10 to the positive 5 Q per more magnesium. Uh, so therefore for this reaction and the written, uh, we do not we, we don't we, we don't have to convert into kj so yeah most of the time 
you are writing KJ because this obviously a very large number. Uh, so that's the way, that's the process. We finally uh, get the third each direction. Okay? And uh, uh, for, for some of those reactions, for this particular reaction, so right now we just write a delta H equals, a delta H reaction equals negative 4.6 times 10 to the positive 5J. We, we drop that more uh, per more mg because by implication, that means this negative 4.6 times 10 to the positive 5J is associated with those moles in this equation. So there's coefficient of one for mg, that means it is square mole of four one mole of mg solid. And then this number also will be for two more HCl, and for one more MgCl2, for one more H2 gas. So this is CRA 6.5. 14 is the, the addition of hydrochloric acid to a silver nitrate solution precipitates the silver chloride according to the following equation. So in the hydrochloric acid is HCl aqueous, silver nitrate solution is AgMO3 aqueous. So these two solution, aqueous solution, uh, exchange ions and produces AgCl solate, then plus H and 3 aqueous. Uh, also tell you when 40.0 milliliter of 0 0.100 molar, so this is the volume, this is the concentration of Ag Ag and 3, it combined with 40.0 milliliter of 0 0.100 molar HCl. So this is the volume of HCl solution, and this is the concentration of HCl solution. Uh, so we combine these two solutions in a coffee cup parameter. Then we find out the temperature changes from 23.40 degrees Celsius to 24.5 degrees Celsius. And we want to calculate the delta H reaction for the reaction as written. Use 1.0 gram per milliliter as a density of solution and C or specific heat equals 4.18 uh, joule per, uh, per gram or per degree Celsius as the specific heat uh, capacity of the solution. Uh, so it's kind of uh, very similar in, as an example, but here we are given uh, the information a little differently. We are given the volume and the concentrations of the reactant. Uh, so in terms of that, it's a little different other than that, uh, we will use a very similar approach. Uh, so we can start with, uh, uh, we want to use this uh, Q solution equals mass of a solution, the mass of a solution, then times CS of the solution, and then times delta T uh, to get the Q solution first. Uh, to do that, we obviously need this mass solution. And uh, this is given, and we can uh, we also need to calculate the delta T. So mass solution uh, will depend on the total volume. So our total volume of the solution equals 40.0 milliliter come from the AgM3 then plus 40.0 uh, 40 milliliter from the HCl. So altogether we get 80.0 milliliter. And then we are told we can use density equals 1.0 gram per milliliter. So therefore we can use 80.0 milliliter then times this uh, conversion fraction, so one point uh, here is given is density. So 1.0 gram per milliliter, so therefore we get 80.0 gram uh, solution. So now we have the method of solution. 
So next, let's see what is delta T. So delta T is what equals final temperature Tf minus initial temperature Ti. So final temperature is 24.51 degrees Celsius. Initial temperature is 23.40 degrees Celsius. So therefore, we get 1.11 degrees Celsius. So now we can use our equation, so therefore Q solution or equals mass of solution, which is 80.80.0 gram, and then our specific heat of solution, specific heat of solution, so like C of S, so that equals 4.18 joule per gram per Celsius, and our temperature change, delta temperature change, delta T is 1.11, 1.11 degrees Celsius. So therefore, we can see our Q solution is probably equals those numbers uh, multiplied. And uh, uh, so we will keep it that way. And and uh, let me just see if uh, if we check the conservation of the unit, then see what we get. So gram gram count out Celsius Celsius count out get juice. So question ask you to uh, all those uh, multiple all those multiple choice is a uh, kJ per mole is here kJ per mole is here. So right now we have J. We need to do another conversion to convert this J into kilojoules. So we'll write uh, one kJ over one thousand. J, so we count out the J, then get how much uh, uh, kJs. Uh, you know what? I will, that's my usual way, I don't do the calculation in the middle step. So I will keep this, so then we can write another conversion. So this will equals negative Q reaction. So finally, you want to calculate uh, delta H reaction. So delta H reaction equals Q reaction divided Q reaction divided by moles all those moles HCl so divided by moles of HCl. So we have this number. So we have uh, 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 those numbers multiply divide equals negative Q reaction. So for our Q reaction will be this last number here multiply. Uh, so if you do it on your own, you can just multiply them out to get a number. But I did not do that before I started the recording. So I just keep writing all those numbers and uh, let me cross out the the J, so J, J comes out, so we only have KJ as a unit, and uh, then times 1.11, then finally divided by 1000, so that will be the KJ in the numerator. So now, what will be the number in the denominator? Denominator shall be the moles of HCl. So, how do you find the mole of HCl? Well, you have the Volume, you have the concentration. What do you do? You can start with uh, 40.0 ml, then use that 1000 ml, is 1L, then, so this fraction just convert the ml into L. So the next fraction will come from on this one, they are the same. So this volume 44 also HCl. Then the concentration of HCl is 0 0.100. Okay, so let's see this, what, again, what we're doing here is this milliliter, milliliter kind of get liters. Then we are gonna use this uh, concentration, capital N for HCl. Okay, so this 0 0.100, Capital M HCl is the concentration for HCl. So you you saw you before you removed that before, and uh, so so that means you have one L and then zero point one zero zero 
moles of HCl. Okay, so now see the cancellation those units and the liter liter come out, you get more HCl. And, and then that means if you take those number, a uh, lot of numbers, so 80 times 4.18 times 1.11 divided by 1000, then divided by 40 divided by 1000 and times that. So all the all those units count out, only this unit, is not, the key did not count out, and then more HCL not count out. So let me highlight those, num those units that did not count out. and. Uh, and then you can see this is the unit you want because this all the multiple choice is in this unit. So what do you do next? Just uh, just uh, one times the k stroke, uh, starting from uh, the top numbers, and then you will get the answer. So what you get uh, for this uh, is negative ninety three. And again, what unit we have is the kJ per mole of HCl. Okay, so so therefore our answer is A. Our answer is A. So next, we're going to study the relationships involving delta H reaction. Okay, first, when reaction is multiplied by a factor, delta H reaction is multiplied by that factor, by the same factor, because delta H reaction is extensive. Let's see one example. If we have an equation written as uh, 1C solid plus 1, O2 gas that is uh, 1, CO2 gas, and uh, delta H is negative 393.5 kilojoule. So if you multiply every substance in that equation by 2, you are also multiply the delta H by 2. So that's what this first statement talks about. Therefore, uh, the delta H for this reaction, we have two carbon solid plus two O2 gas plus two CO2 gas. The delta H is negative 87.0 seven, seven kJ. The second uh, uh, relationship is if a reaction is reversed, then the sign of delta H is reversed. So one example is, Again, the last uh, uh, we used the last example. Uh, so if we write uh, CSO2 gas as reactant and CO2 as a product, so our delta H is negative 393.5. If we reverse the way it is written, we write CO2 as a reactant, then CS and O2 as a product. We convert this one with that one. That totally reversed. Then what happened to the delta H? Delta H sign reversed. Number are the same. The number is still 393.5, but the sign changed from negative to positive. The number three uh, relationship involving delta H is Hess's law. So Hess's law said. If a reaction can be expressed as a sum of a series of steps, then the delta H reaction for the overall reaction is the sum of the heights of uh, reactions for each step. And um, so for this uh, diagram, I'm going to show you, and uh, here I just tell you the answer if you go from bottom to top increases. And what you probably want to notice are the three reactions. Uh, so first reaction you can see is, uh, or if you can write the equation, uh, we can write the equation for, for the first reaction, we got call that Y. So the equation for Y is starting this as reactant. So this as a reactant for reaction Y, and this is a product for reaction Y. So for, for 
for reaction one, let me erase and rewrite. So for reaction one, we can write uh, A plus two B produce a C. Okay, so for reaction two, where it means starting this C as reactant and produce two D as a product. So we can write the chemical reaction for two with this delta H two, it will be one C produce two D. Okay, so then equation three, it will be uh, starting from this two reactant, so A plus two B, and then produce two D. Okay, so from the diagram, you can see what is the delta H3. What, so this is reaction three, from here to here is the reaction, uh, reaction three. So reaction three has this much, has this much, reaction three has this much delta H change from there to here. So from here to here is a delta H chain for reaction three. And from the diagram, you can see delta H three will equals delta H one plus delta H two. So the Hess law also tell you that has law tell you uh, if you have this reaction has delta H Y, this reaction is delta H two, this reaction has delta H three, and uh, has it law tell you if this equation three is come from adding one and two, then you will have this delta H equals a delta H3 equals delta H2 plus delta H1. You can check this is true by adding one with two. If you add one and two you get a three, then your delta H3 must equals delta H1 plus delta H2. So I will hold that until we check that is true. And how you check that, you check that like this. So you take one plus two. One plus two, which means you, you add in the reactants. So the reactant from, from one is A plus two B. Then add in the reactant from two. So the reactant from two is C. So this is the adding one and two, adding the, pro, adding the reactant. Then you add in the product. So the product from one is C, and then the product from two is two D. So this is what, what I circled this. So this is actually really adding one plus two. Then you can, can check if you have uh, something on this uh, uh, arrows left side. Uh, if they are the same, you put them together. If you, similarly, if you have something on the right side, and they are the same, you put them together. And in this case, we don't have anything on the same on the left. We don't ha have anything on the right on the same. The second thing that you want to see is that if you have something on the left of this arrow and also on the right of the arrow, you cancel them out. So I will see here, I will see here, we cross it out. If you do that, so what's left over is A plus 2B produce 2D, which is exactly this guy. So therefore, we check 1 plus 2 equals 3. So, so if you check that the two, then the delta H for three will equals delta H one because you're checking three, equation three equals equation one plus equation two. So if that's true, you will do the same for the delta H. So therefore delta H equals delta H one plus delta H two. So this is the idea or the principle of the Hess law. Next few uh, problem, we are going to use Hess's law. Okay, so for example, six point three Hess's law, I find delta H for delta H reaction for the reaction as a circle in this uh, green, using three reactions with known delta H. So three equations give to you, and all of them have delta H. So you want to use Hess's law from these three equations. And each equation have a delta H. You want to find delta H for this equation, 
So what you do, you just manipulate in these three equations. So after that, you will get a three possible three. All of them you have to manipulate. Sometimes you don't have to manipulate everyone. So once you manipulate the equation, get uh, new equations, and then you think that those new equations adding together can give you this, then you can calculate your delta H for this reaction. So now how do we know what to do with those equations, with this three given equation, uh, to reverse them or multiply them by some number, and then we adding them together, get that. So how we do that, and how where we start, we usually will uh, uh, use all those subtenants in this equation. You want to find the delta H as a guiding line. Okay, so let's say the first something you want to have in this equation is, is three carbon solid. Now you examine, do we have a carbon solid in reaction equation one? No, we don't. We have in equation two, so CS, and we don't have in equation three. We only have a CS, so CS in equation two. So that is, you, you're starting like that. Then you can see where is the CS you want to. In this equation, you want you want this CS, C solid on the left side of the arrow. Then this equation two give you CS on the left side of this arrow. So the lo that means the location of this CS in equation two matching the location of the CS in this equation. But what is the difference? The difference is the number. So the equation you want need three C solid, and here only have one. So therefore, you have to think about multiply this equation two by three. So that will give you the right location for carbon solid and give you the right number. Okay, so next you're looking for this H2. So H2 is also the reactant in this equation. And this equation, you don't know the delta H yet. So you can see where can you find the, uh, where can you find H2? We don't have H2 in the first one. We don't have H2 in the second one. We have H2 in the number three. So you need the H2 on the left side of the arrow. And this equation three give you the H2 on the left side. Again, what's the problem? How much H2 do you need for? And how much H2 do you have here too? What do you do? You multiply the equation three by two. So you multiply the equation two by three, you multiply equation three by two. So that will give you the right location for carbon solid, right location for H2 gas, and the right number. So last, you will say in this equation, you want this C3H8 as the product. So which of these three equations give us C3H8? First one. Uh, give you the number is okay. So you need a one C3H8. And here you have one C3H8 gas. What's the problem? The location. So you need this C3H8 on the right side of the arrow, and this C3H8 is on the left side of the arrow. So what do you do? You have to reverse this first equation. Okay, so this is what our plan. So we are going to reverse equation one. If you reverse equation one, so therefore this number also reverse the sign. So we'll reverse equation one, which means before reverse, we have a three CO2 as a product, four H2 as a product. No, we are gonna write them as reactant. So we'll write the initial reactant as a product, but keep the number. So that's the reverse of the one. Again, why you want to reverse this one? Because you need this C388 on the right side of the arrow. So now it's this. This C388 is on the right side of the arrow. So then you will do the reversion for the sign for delta H. So the sign for the initial equation 
1, equation 1, if negative 243 now become positive 243. Okay. So what do we set up for equation 2? We're going to multiply equation 2 by 3. Okay. So what do you do? You multiply every coefficient. So the given problem is carbon, carbon like that. Okay. So now you multiply them by 3. You multiply all the coefficients by 3. So if you do that, you also multiply this delta H by 3. Okay, what do we said about 3? You need to multiply 3 by 2 because you need a 4 H2. See 4 H2, and here can only give you 2 H2. Okay, so therefore we multiply this by 2, and then our delta H also 2. So after that, we add in those equations, and then we check everything. Uh, uh, sure, like, uh, uh, okay, now this is after we uh, manipulate. So we, we rewrite our reverse equation one. We see have this. Now we modify this out. So we modify this onto carbon. So right now there's only one carbon, so it becomes three carbon. We modify this three onto O2. So here is one O2. Now that becomes three O2. We also modify the three onto the CO2. So CO2 right now is one, also becomes three. So we modify the by uh, the, the delta H. So delta H negative 393.5 multiplied by three becomes negative 1181 kilojoules. Okay, so we do the same multiplication for equation three. So we'll take a two times two, get a four, two times one, get a two, two times two, get a four. Then also modify this onto that. Okay, so now we have a three new equation. So we are checking if we add in this three new equation, do we get that? You can just rewrite them, or you can just draw a line on, on these three arrows. So you can see you can combine the same on the left side, you cancel out the same on the opposite side. So we can see there's three CO2 gas on the left. There's three CO2 gas on the right. So that cross out. Okay. So what else you can you can see that you can cross out? Water, right? So there are four H2O cross out on the left. You can do that from the first equation, but when you add them together, so they all all those six here are the reactant after adding. And all those are here as the product of adding. So therefore, you don't tell the difference between that one coming from equation one, that comes from equation three. So as long as they are on the left side of the arrow, they are on the right side of the arrow, so they are the same, you cross them out. So on the right side of the equation one, we have 502. So then we have 302 from this second one. Equation two, we have a two O two from equation three, so that also together also five O two. Therefore, this five O two cancel out this three O two, also this two O two, and uh, I think that's all you can cross out. So therefore, what is not a cross out is three carbon. So we have three carbon matching that. Then we have four is two gas, four is two gas matching that. And the only product that's not a cancel out is this. So we're making that. So therefore, we checked. So this equation before cross out, plus this equation before we cross out anything, plus this equation get that, and this equation have a delta H positive 243. This equation has delta H negative 1181. This last equation has delta H. 967.2. So if you add in these three, get in that, then you know that equation have a delta H. And that delta H equals this one, this one, this one, sum. Or, or not literally add, so we call them sum. All right, so therefore, if you take 2,443 minus 1181, then minus 90, you get this. That's how you use Hess's law. Okay, so now for this uh, CRA 6.15, you will do the same process. And uh, you see, 
you want to you want to find the delta h for this equation. In this equation, you have n o c l, and these are the two equations. You have delta h, uh, and this second equation give you n o c l. But there are two problems. One is the location, the other one is number. So therefore, you have to think about how you manipulate these two equations. And you can give them a, a number. So probably you can call this uh, equation one. And then this is equation two. OK, so therefore, what we can do is just uh, uh, reverse equation two. Why why we do that? Because we need we need this angle C L from this equation two. Angle C L in equation two is on the right side of the arrow. We need the angle C L guess on the left side of the arrow. So that's how we reverse, so that will make that into the right location, but the number not right, so therefore we also have to times two. So therefore, our equation two become two NOCL gas. So we reverse it, so CL, NOCL, reversed from the right to the left. And multiply by two, the one becomes two. Then produce two angle gas. So two times one is still two. And two times a half is one. So therefore Cl2 gas. Then this delta H will equals two times negative 90.3 kilojoule. So and before we reverse, it's positive 90.3. So therefore, after the reverse, we have a negative 90.3. Then we times two, because we multiply this equation by two, and multiply the reverse equation by two. All right, so that possibly will give us the, the, the right answer, because now we have this uh, two angles here on, on the left, and we have two angles here on the left we need. So what do we do for, for equation Y? We also need to reverse equation one. Why? Why that? Because uh, let's say in 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 this equation, you want to calculate the delta H. You have n two O two gas. And uh, where is the n two O two gas from equation one? But they are on the left side. So you need n two O two on the right. So therefore, you have to reverse. Not only reverse, you can say you need an n, one n to one or two, and here I only give you half. So for reverse equation one and times times two. So let's do that. So therefore we'll have two n o gas and produce n two gas plus o two gas. So if you do that, you will do you, you first, because you reversed, so therefore, oh, I use wrong number. I think this 90 is, this 90 is for equation one. What we did here is for equation two, so, so therefore, excuse me for that, so we need to erase this one. So this one should be, uh, we're starting from uh, negative 38. Uh, point of six so that become positive thirty eight point six. Okay, sorry about that. So now we are going to do for the equation one. For the equation one, so you start with positive ninety point three, so that become negative ninety point three kj. So that's because you reverse equation one, and you also multiply that by two. Okay, yeah. So that's the way you're going to. Uh, do the for the delta H, just uh, uh, some mistake there. So now you have these two new equations. Uh, let's see, call this will be our equation two prime, and this will be our equation one prime. 
So now I say if you add in uh, one prime with two prime, uh, she can get this. I call it T total. Well, that equals total. If that's true, then your delta H, uh, so we'll call that delta H2 prime and delta H1 prime. So if that's true, then our delta H for this equation will equals delta H2 prime plus delta H1 prime. Uh, so to check that, to check that, and uh, let's do that. Uh, let's just uh, instead of write everything, so I will just highlight these two arrows. Then we are just adding uh, or checking the cancellation of everything on the left of this arrow, uh, these two arrows and on the right of the two arrows. Okay, so now let's do that. Uh, so, okay, so I can see there are two angle gaps here and two angle gaps here. So they both uh, uh, the same, but on the left and on the right, so therefore they kind of I think that's only the kind of out. So therefore, what level over another kind of out is this two angle CL that's changed the pain. So what's another kind of out? This one another kind of out, and then this another kind of out, this another kind of out, this another kind of out. So that means after we add in two prime with one prime, we do get exactly this T. So therefore, if we rewrite what does not cancel out is 2NOCL gas produce uh, Cl2 gas plus N2 gas plus O2 gas. Right? So this, again, this is not cancel out, this is not cancel out, this is not cancel out, this is not cancel out. So this is exactly matching in that. So therefore, now we can go ahead, calculate. So we we'll have uh, uh, delta H2 prime is two times 38.6 uh, kJ. And then plus two times negative 90.3 kJ. As a result, you will get negative 103.4 kJ, and this answer matching C. So therefore, our answer for this question is C. Right, so the CRA 6.6, uh, so very similar, uh, you want to uh, calculate this Delta H. So, what is delta H for this reaction? Maybe we will again at the last slide, we'll call this is T total. So, we want to calculate the delta H T total. So, we have ABC. So, you just see what do you do to this equation A? So, you can see we need to reverse, we need to reverse. The equation, uh, equation A. Why? Because okay, so we need to reverse as uh, A. Why we need to reverse A? Because let's uh, say so in this uh, equation T, we need this uh, CH4 gas. And uh, then you check in these three equations, so equation A, B, and C. Which one has CH4 gas? Only in equation A. So therefore, we're going to reverse, uh, let's say, equation A. Uh, so if we do that, that means we need to uh, also reverse the sign for delta HA. 
So let's first reverse the equation A, and uh, the equation A will become CH4, or the reverse equation A will become CH4 produces uh, carbon solid plus uh, 2H2 gas. So now the delta H, uh, let's just make a list here, so delta H uh, will equals a uh, positive 74.6, all of them in kilojoules, and are they all in kilojoules? So now let's decide what shall we do to uh, equation B. So equation B, well, that depend on uh, this C Cl4. So we need a CCL4 in this equation T. So in T, the CCL4 gas, we need it on the right, and uh, only this equation B give you CCL4. So therefore, we are going to, we are going to keep uh, equation uh, B as it is. So we will say keep equation B as it is. So therefore our uh okay so our delta h will not change but we need to just rewrite our equation two so our equation b so therefore c solid plus two cl2 gas uh two cl gas and produce one c cl4 gas so therefore, we still have this negative 95.7 kJ. Yeah, so sometimes um, there are some of those uh, substances they appear in both equations. So therefore, we kind of skip checking this one. Uh, so this Cl2, it uh, in equation B, also in equation C. Uh, so what we did is uh, we go by what do we do to equation one, what do you do to equation two, and see here, we just see what we need to do for equation C. So we need, uh, uh, let's see, we need a four HCl gas, and uh, uh, so this equation C gives you two HCl gas on the right. Uh, in addition to that, uh, you can see you also need a four Cl2 uh, so equation B give you two Cl2 on the left side of the arrow. Equation C give you one Cl2 on the left side. So if you want to add them together, so you only have three Cl, but two plus one. So that also tell us we need to uh, uh, just simply multiply C, or can say times equation C by two. Let's do that. So equation C becomes 2H2 gas plus 2Cl2 gas and produce 4HCl gas. So therefore, the delta H will become 2 times, we cannot reverse it, 92.3. So like that. So that's also KJ. We will just write KJ for. Both of, all of them. Okay, so now you check the cancellation. Again, we don't have to copy everything, so we just mark the arrow. Every everything on the left side arrow was considered as on the left side of our uh, final arrow, and then everything on the on the left side will be on the left side. Everything on the right side will be on the right side. Let's see what we have, uh, what we can count out. So there is a common solid, common solid count out. And, uh, and then what else can out? There's a 2 is 2, 2 is 2 count out. I think that's it. So then what level over, we will have this one did not count out, this one did not count out, this count out, did not count out. So then this one does not cancel out, this one does not cancel out. So let's circle this one does not cancel out, and then we can write them together. 
and you can see they melting uh, the T. So what gonna come out from the equation A is CH4 gas. From equation B is a two Cl2 gas. From equation C is two Cl2 gas. So two Cl2, two Cl2 add together because they are on the same side on the left, on the left. Therefore, we have four Cl2 gas. And then we can see what is on the right side of the arrow. Don't have anything from equation A. They all cancel out. From equation B, we have a C Cl4 gas. Then from equation C, we have four H Cl gas. Okay, so this is the the sum of this is three, the sum of this three. So that matching the T. Therefore, we check. Uh, so we add in this, this, uh, maybe call this A prime, and this is the B prime, and this is C prime. So sum of A prime plus B prime, and then plus C prime, equals t. So therefore, uh, we we'll, can see that delta h t sure equals this three number add, which means, let me write over to the left side, so we will have room to write them all out. So therefore, our delta h t will equals Positive seventy four point six kJ and then plus a negative ninety five point seven kJ uh, then plus a two times negative ninety two point three kJ. So that's all the number you multiply and add. Uh, so then what you get. Okay, so what you get? Is negative 205.7 kJ. So therefore the answer is A. Okay, so uh, CRA 6.17 is given the following equation. You want to calculate the delta H. It's very similar as the last two problems. Uh, so we'll do this in a similar way. So if I call this is the equation one, equation two, equation three, equation T. Okay. So what we need to do is uh, reverse one and then times three over two and uh, we'll see why we do that why we reverse uh, one okay why would we reverse one because in the t we need three angle two and here we have angle two only in one. So angle two. No angle two. Only angle two in equation one, but this is still two. So therefore we need to reverse this on the left side, but this is on the left side, and then we multiply uh, the two by three over two, you will get a three. Okay. Uh, so you, you do that. So therefore your equation one will become equation one prime. Equation one prime will become three NO2 gas uh, produce uh, three NO gas then plus three over two O2 gas. So now what will be the delta H? So again, we'll make a list here. Delta H will come from that. So that will become 
forty eleven six and one times three over two. Okay, so now let us see what we need to do for equation two. For equation two, well, that per much depend on this guy. So this rectangle, it's too liquid. Well, it's too liquid will give you, uh, I mean, the equation two give you it's too liquid. Uh, that's only one. So that location, okay, on the left side of an arrow, and you need on the left side, but that's too much. You need uh, only one, that's two. So therefore, what we do is uh, times uh, uh, two. So, so it's going to times two by uh, by half. Times two by by half. So let's do that. So uh, here you have two and two. If you time uh, by half or divided by two. That become uh, as it is what the two prime. So two prime become n two gas, n two gas. Then plus five divided by two. So five uh, over two o two gas. Then plus two h two liquid divided by two become one h two o liquid. And then on the right side, on the product side, you have four nitric acids so that become two H and three and uh, eight gas. So then the delta H will become linear reverses, so that was still negative two fifty six, then divided by two. Okay, so now let's see what will happen to the equation three. That's called that's a three prime. Okay, so for the three prime. You pretty much will say, uh, uh, so you have, uh, uh, you don't need anything like really from this, uh, this one particularly, uh, because you already have something, uh, uh, you need something to cancel those out because you need this angle. You already have something uh, from, uh, uh, from your equation one reverse. So you already have a three angle here. Uh, you you only need one angle in the equation T. Uh, so so actually you need uh, to reverse this equation three. So use this two angle cancel out. Uh, so two of these angles. So therefore you will have only one angle for this equation T. Okay. So therefore we will first let's see the, we want to what we need to do for the equation three. So we'll see we are going to reverse reverse equation three. So now let's do the reverse and then we write the down of the reverse. So therefore that called three prime. So three prime become that's the reverse of three. So we'll have n o a uh, two angle gas and produce uh, N2 gas then plus O2 gas. So that's how the delta H reverse become negative 183 kJ. Okay, so now let's check in the addition. So we're going to work some. One prime and uh, two prime and then three prime. See if that equals t or t. Well, again, we will just uh, mark those arrows and checking those uh, on the left side of the marked arrow, and then we compare with those on the uh, right side. We we'll compare the different side, also compare the same side. If they are on the same side, we put them together. If they are on the different side, then we cross them out. Right. So what we say is, uh, so first of all, remember we see whether the uh, so this three angle will cancel out this two angle become one. All right. 
So now we have uh, 3 over 2 over 2 times plus 1 over 2. So 3 over 2 is 1.5. 1.5 1 .5 plus 1 is 2.5. So 2.5 together cancel out with 2.5. Yeah. Uh, so then what else? Uh, we have N2 here on the right side. We have N2 on the left side. So that cross out. Uh, I think that pretty much that's the ace, right? So therefore, what the left over is this is 3NO2. So another cancel out. So that's all on the left side of one prime. On the left side of a two prime is this eight twelve. On the left side of a three prime, nothing. And then let's check in what the left over on the right side of y. Let's first write what we have, what we have on the left side now. So on the left side, we have a three n o two case. Then plus h two o liquid. So that's all we have on the left side of the arrow. On the right side of one prime, we cancel out the O2, but we have one and O plus left. Then we can see here on the two prime right side, we have two H and O3 equals. And we don't have anything left over in the right on the right side of three prime. So that's all we have uh, for the summation of one prime plus two prime plus three prime on the left side on the right side. So that's matching. So that's really so yes. So that means if you add in this one prime, two prime, three prime, you have a T because this is T. This is matching this T. So then. Your delta h t. Okay, so delta h t is what equals this three number addition. And uh, let me, I will use this one and we'll begin the addition. So we'll write delta h t equals 116 one, times 3 over 2 then plus negative 256 over 2, then minus 183. So that's what give us the result for this uh, 17. And uh, what we get is negative 137 the unit the kilojoules. And that's, that's the answer D. Okay, so next we are going to study uh, a special set of uh, temperature and pressure. We call that uh, standard condition. So, uh, uh, not only temperature and pressure, we call them uh, some other specifications. So the standard state is the state of a material at a definite, uh, defined set of conditions. Uh, pure gas at exactly one atm pressure and pure solid or liquid in its most stable form at exactly one atm pressure and the temperature of interesting, interesting, uh, usually 25 degrees Celsius for the temperature. Uh, substance in a solution with concentration should be one molar. Uh, the standard entropy change uh, will be written as Delta H naught, or sometimes called zero, is the entropy change when all rectangular products are in the standard state. There's another special uh, entropy change is the, the standard entropy of formation written as delta H naught F is the entropy change for the reaction forming one more of a pure compound from its constituents element. The element must be in their standard state. Uh, so the delta H naught F equals zero kilojoule per mole for a pure 
element at a standard state and in its most stable form. form. Uh, what that means is the uh, sum of those uh, uh, elements has more than one form of uh, element form. For example, oxygen can be O2 or can be ozone. Okay, so then by definition, uh, only one of those element form will have this delta H not F equal to zero. Uh, for this example, oxygen. So O2, I guess, will have this equal to zero, but not O3. We don't know which one will be the most stable format of the element. You can check the table like this. If you have this delta H not F equal to zero, then you know that's the most stable form. For example, here, this Br2 liquid has this time of zero, which means Think about the BR, so what is the most stable form for this bromine element? Not the BR atom gas, uh, not the BR2 solid, it's the BR2 liquid. And uh, so this is, uh, again, go back to the problem for oxygen. You can see oxygen can have O2, O3. So you can see for O2, so this delta is zero F equal to zero. But for O3, it's not zero. So those numbers you can use to calculate well, those numbers just for some of those uh, elements or substances. And in a chemical reaction, you have the reactant substance or product substance. So if I give you the number uh, delta F0 for those substances in the chemical reaction, then you can just uh, use them to the calculation. So you can also learn how to write the formation reaction equations um, so reactions of element in their most stable form to produce one more of two compounds. Uh, we call those kind of chemical reaction equation or chemical reactions are the formation reactions. So if you are not sure what the most stable form at the standard state of the element, find the form in the appendix where they have just talked about on the last slide. Uh, because the definition requires one more of a compound to be made for this formation reaction, the coefficient of the reactant may be fractions. Uh, so let's see, write the formation reaction for CO gas. The formation reaction is the reaction between the elements in the compound, uh, which are carbon and O. Uh, so then next we'll decide what format of those carbon and O to use. So we will first say, we need these two elements to produce carbon monoxide gas. So definitely we need carbon and oxygen, but that's not the final answer because we have to specify uh, what form shall we use for carbon and what shall we use for oxygen. So the element must be in their most stable form at a standard condition. There are several forms of solid carbon, the one with uh, delta F naught equal to zero, is graphite. So now we know uh, we, right, we're not simply using carbon, we'll use carbon as graphite. So also oxygen is the standard state is the diatomic gas, O2 gas. Uh, so therefore we uh, know, know more details of the reactant. So we give uh, carbon for the uh, carbon solid graphite and oxygen is probably O2 gas. And then next we want to balance the equation. So by definition, you only want to produce one of the product. You only produce one CO gas. So if I keep this one, don't change. Then you can use fractions for the reactant. Uh, for this particular example, you see carbon, one carbon, one carbon balance, then you have one O, so you have two O here, so therefore you will use a coefficient at 0 0.5 or one over two. And the fact that this will be the final answer for this uh, formation reaction for CO or carbon monoxide gas. Uh, so the next uh, example is the 6.10 right equations for the formation of uh, uh, A, magnesium carbonate B uh, glucose from the respective element in the standard state, include the uh, value of delta H for each uh, equations. 
Okay, so for the first one, you want to produce one more of uh, MgCO3. Uh, so, so there, therefore, you know speci precisely or specifically that the product should be one MgCO3. Then you decide what reactant do we need. So at the beginning, you just say we need Mg, we need carbon, we need oxygen. So we need this. Uh, and then you can see what format we use. For most of the metal, just metal solid. For carbon, we saw some last example for the carbon solid graphite. For all the cities, it should be O2 gas. So therefore, we know the, 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 the most stable format for the three elements, for the three reactants. So therefore, we produce only one MgCO3 solid. So then you want to balance, balance the equation by using any number you can use to uh, Make the number the same. Uh, next, you just go to Appendix 2D to find uh, the delta H0F for this particular uh, subtain. So before, uh, either before or after, so you may, you see you have one Mg, one Mg, one carbon, one carbon, and then you need three O because there's three O, so therefore you take a three O two, multiply by two, you get three O. And then from this appendix to B, you get this number. And let's finish this part A. For part B, you want to write an equation for the formation of C6 H2O6. So what to the stamina? And uh, we see we need carbon, so therefore carbon should be solid is graphite. We need a H. Uh, so what should be H? If you don't know, you go to that uh, table, see what uh, format of H give you delta. H not F equal to zero, so we say it's for the H2 gas. O2 gas, we know that, and then we'll produce only one C6 H12. So then we will use whatever number that we need to make the number the same on the left, on the right. So we need six comments, so we'll put a six comment, and then we need a, a 12 H, so we'll put a six here, we need six O, we we'll put a three here. So the equation the balance, and then you go to that uh, appendix to B, find a number and put it here. So this number is for this substance, and actually is also the chemical reaction uh, answer key. So for this chemical reaction, you're going from this left side to the right side. So what is our delta H, delta H reaction? So delta H reaction for this reaction as written here equals this number. Okay, so CRA 6.18 is the right equation for the formation of uh, uh, NaCl and then also write uh, TBMO3. Uh, so then you want to write the value for the delta H0 reaction. It should be the delta uh, H0F. And you see the answer for the E because uh, so you only need to produce uh, one NaCl. So this one NaCl solid. Uh, so that will give you the right uh, uh, product. Then you check the reactant. So you need one Na, so that one Na. You need one Cl, so therefore uh, half times two give you one Cl. And then we need, we know we need to choose uh, um, something like that, uh, which means you don't, you, you choose Cl2, you don't choose Cl3 because this is the most stable format for Cl. So for the second part, so as we said, most of the metal is simple, just use the metal solid. Uh, so then for nitrogen, you, you want to use N2, for oxygen, use O2. And this equation is also balanced because you need a 1 2D, you need a 2A, you need a 6O. So then those, those two reactions, what are their uh, value for delta H? Uh, because they are formation reactions, so therefore we give them a special name. We call them delta H not F. So not means a standard, and this F means a formation. So this is the special kind of a special name for a delta H reaction. So that not is stand, standing for standard.
Okay, so we can uh, calculate the standard answer rate change for regression using the delta H not F. Uh, so you can see that there's a, a formula. Um, and any regression can be written as the sum of formation regressions or the reverse of formation regressions for the regression products. Uh, the delta H not for the regression is designed the sum of the delta is not F or for the component regressions that come from the Hess's law. So the formula is written as a delta H regression. We saw this delta H regression many, many times, but now I just say this not, so this not standing for standard. Uh, so, so you want to calculate uh, the delta H regression standard. If you have those number of data, for the delta uh, H F zero for the product and regression, you use this formula, you can calculate this number. Uh, so in this equation, uh, so this sum means addition, okay? uh, this sigma means sum, uh, and is the coefficient of the uh, regression or product So this equation can be verified by the following example using Hess's law. And uh, so we will just uh, not try to verify the equation, but just uh, take those uh, number uh, from those tables and uh, apply into the formula for delta H reaction not. Uh, so we can see there are two products and two regatines. Sometimes those regatines will have this delta F naught equal to zero, but uh, sometimes they are not. Uh, so we just just go apply those numbers into this uh, formula. So we have one regat one product is a four angle gas. The other product is a six eight two gas. Uh, so we just find the number. What is number for H2O gas? Uh, so this number we talk about is this uh, delta HF naught. So here I give you for H2O gas, for each one, H2O gas is negative 241.8 uh, kilojoule per mole. And uh, you need this six, so six will become six moles. Okay. So therefore we, we just, Identify what are the product, what are their coefficient, and take their coefficient, and uh, the coefficient again for what uh, for uh, for angle is the four, for what is six, therefore we take a four times delta not f angle gas, then six times delta not f is two gas. Uh, so then we see next is the regatine. So we have two regatine. One regatine of four and it is three gas, other one five O2 gas. So those are the five and the four where they come from. And next we just uh, keep the number for, from the coefficient, then we check in the number uh, from the table. So for this uh, angle, it's a 91.3. So therefore this guy here becomes 91.3. Therefore H2 which is negative 241.8, so therefore here. And uh, then similarly, we, we go to the regatine. So we have four uh, uh, angle three. So for angle three, we have negative 45.9. Then for the O2, it is zero. So now we, we have all those numbers. We just multiply, add, or subtract. So we get uh, negative 902.0 kilojoules. So this uh, CRA 6.19 is about this uh, thermite. So the thermite reaction is a reaction in, in which powdered aluminum reacted with iron oxide is highly exothermic. So this picture show you. So the reaction equation is written as 2 Al solid plus uh, Fe2O3 solid plus uh, Al2O3 so, uh, solid plus Fe solid. So you want to use the standard entropy of formation. So entropy of formation 
Uh, so here we miss, uh, so this will be delta H uh, uh, zero F, which just that means a special reaction. Uh, probably particularly you want to say this, uh, change this into just whatever that particular meaning. So this will be F. Right, so then you are just using that equation. So you want to see what is delta H for this reaction. We can call that delta H reaction at a standard condition. So find that. So we write delta H naught, which means standard condition, and Rx means reaction. So that equals summation of the coefficient times delta H naught F, that's it for the product, and then minus delta uh, on its sigma. So sigma, and uh, maybe call them M, the coefficient for the reactant. So you use a coefficient and then multiply onto the number for those delta f and then this will be the reactant. All right, so we have two products and uh, so al 3 coefficient y, so we will simply delta 0 f and the, the, comp the subtens is al O three. So the C is very important. Solid. And uh, then this this guy should be zero. So you you, you take a two come from zero to then delta H is zero F for what for the F E solid. All right. So then we will minus sum this those reactants. So the reactants. No problem signing here, so minus, so minus, let's see, uh, we want to put that into a sum, uh, so two times delta H zero F for aluminum solid, then plus uh, Y, that's Y, uh, so delta H zero F for the F E, Two O three solid and uh, that. So next, just uh, substitute those numbers. Uh, so what is the number delta H zero F for Al two O three solid? What is this? Therefore, we have a negative sixteen seven five on seven and the kilojoules. Uh, so what you need is the for more, uh, so then you are times y, uh, so you can see just y more. Well, I should write there the one there also, so you will not be surprised where this y more come from. Okay. So if we write one here, and also write one here, okay. So this has a unit, so if I write one here, that means one more. You know, before the coefficient can be write as uh, how many molecules or how many moles. So in this type of problem, they all standing for moles. Therefore, more and more cancel out. So the next one will be uh, the other product. So we have two times or uh, two more times delta H zero F for the Fe2. Fe2 is the iron standard form, so that is zero. I will write O cross is zero. All right, so then minus, uh, so we have two moles, then times delta H F naught for Al solid, Two elements stable form zero again. So that's why it's not given here. For most of the elements, you don't see the problem sometimes give you that zero. So you have to know some of the common 
um, stable form of the element has those uh, numbers equal to zero. Uh, so next, you will see the other reactant is the Fe203, which has one more, so write one more there, and then see what is the number for Fe203 with this. So negative 824.2 kilojoule per mole. Right, so again, this more per mole comes out. So therefore, what you have is only the kilojoules. So negative 1675.7 kilojoule, then minus a negative 824.2 kilojoules, so that will give us, uh, that will give us uh, negative 851.5 kilojoules, so therefore our answer is A. Okay, so for this uh, CRA uh, 6.20, the chemical hand warmers utilize the oxidation of iron to form iron oxide according to the following equation. So we have a two F, uh, a four Fe solid plus three O2 gas produce two Fe two O3 solid. And uh, you want to calculate the delta H not reaction for this reaction and compute how much heat it produced from a hand a warmer containing 30.0 gram of iron powder. Uh, what I give to you is uh, for this F E two three solid, you have this delta H F. Uh, so delta H F not equals negative eight hundred. 824.2 kilojoules. Uh, only give you this number because in this equation, only this one is compound. This element moves from a stable format. This element moves stable format. So therefore, the delta H uh, not F for these two reactants both are zero. So you first just using the equation you just did on the on the last slide. You see the delta H S is this is delta H. Uh, reaction for this reaction as written, the delta H reaction for E plus. Uh, so the, we will not write the sum again because we only have one product will be two moles of uh, delta H zero F and uh, then for the F E two O three solid, So then minus all those, yeah, that's zero. This, this both reactants are zero, just minus zero. So what you get just simply two moles So two moles And uh, times negative 824.2 kilojoules. So here should be kilojoules per mole. So then per mole and per mole cancel out. So we get delta H reaction is negative 1648.4 kilojoules. And uh, so this, as we saw before, so if this delta H equals uh, negative 1648.4 kilojoule, so therefore you can write quite a few equation between this uh, negative 1600, 1600, 1648.4 uh, kilojoules. So one equation you can write because this is about uh, the iron powder is uh, you can write a four more F E S equivalent as negative 1648.4 kJ. So this equation you're gonna use for the next calculation.
So what you do now, you will start with uh, 30 upon zero gram of uh, Fe and uh, use the model mass of Fe. So model mass of Fe is simple because there's only one Fe. So from the periodic table, you find the number for the model mass of Fe is 55.85 five uh, gram for one more. And then we are going to use this. Uh, and make sure we have this. So we are going to use this equation so to cancel out the more of uh, Fe. The former equivalent as negative 1648.4 kJ. Uh, so we can see the cancellations. So gram comes out, more comes out, we get how much kJs. All right, uh, so we say this is actually become negative 221 kgs. Okay, so I give you two formats for this answer because sometimes you see emit. Emit means negative. Uh, so therefore the answer, we have this number matching this number, then negative 221 matching this number. Therefore, our answer is C. Okay, so this is for chapter six, the lecture part two of two.